Thank you, Andreas, and welcome. I, I don't know how long you've been here with us in Washington. OK, so welcome. He said he came in November, so we know who to blame for, for all these um, tectonic shifts. Um, well, I'm above all pleased that we have gathered on uh, in a few days in advance of World Data Privacy Day. And I wanted to just um, remind all of you that uh, Data Privacy Day um, is meant uh, originally to mark the Council of Europe's Convention for the Protection of Individuals with regard to automatic processing of personal data. Catchy title for an important um, treaty. And uh, the date is set for January 28th because it was on January 28th, 1981 that this convention was opened for signatures. And in the um, intervening years, all 50 members of the Council of Europe have now become signatories of the convention, as well as a number of non-European states, including um, Uruguay here in the Western Hemisphere. The, uh, the date, Data Privacy Day, was first celebrated in Europe um, in 2007, um, just a couple of years ahead of the United States, which, um, which marked Data Privacy Day for the first time in 2009 after House Resolution 31 passed, listen to this, 402 to 0. Can you imagine the political climate in which you could have unanimity on something? When I read you the, um, the content of this House Resolution, um, you'll get a, a real sense for how times have changed. It says, Whereas government officials from the United States and Europe, privacy professionals, academics, legal scholars, representatives of international business, and others with an interest in data privacy issues are working together on this date to further the, the discussion about data privacy and protection. The House of Representatives declares January 28th to be Data Privacy Day. You can hear in this um, resolution a commitment to transnationalism and transatlanticism. You can hear a commitment to science and interdisciplinarity. And you can hear a commitment to discourse, um, all of the kinds of things that I, I deeply cherish in our, in our political life and in my work. Um, it's fitting, above all, that we're meeting here to celebrate Data Privacy Day at the Goethe Institute because it allows us to acknowledge Germany's pioneering um, cultural and legal role on questions of data privacy. This dates back to um, legislation, both at the state and federal level, um, from the 1970s in Germany. And a groundbreaking decision from 1983 from the German Federal Constitutional Court, in which the court discovered for the first time a right to informational self-determination as an individual liberty. And I say all of that and draw attention to the fact that we're gathering here at the German um, Goethe Institute because that um, emphasizes what might be characterized, it underscores what might be characterized as a general disinterest or a lack of leadership from the United States on these questions. I say that despite House Resolution Number 31 from 2009, which declared um, Data Privacy um, Day. It's this divide, the divide between Germany and Europe and the United States on these issues, that is at the core of this evening's um, program, which aims to acknowledge that privacy, in fact, is a socially and culturally contingent concept. It's worth emphasizing this point. It's at the center of the projects we'll be discussing and, and um, uh, dis exposing tonight because I think it's central to any hopes we might have for an authentic and productive engagement across the Atlantic on these issues. Maybe more fundamentally, acknowledging that privacy is culturally and socially contingent is also simply a form of, of respect. For both of those reasons, uh, the Goethe Institute's former director, Wilfred Eckstein, conceived of the P3M5 project, 
Uh, the P3 stands for the Plurality of Privacy Project, and you can hear this commitment to understanding diverse approaches to this question in that, um, that label. The Plurality of Privacy Project was described by um, Wilfred in these terms. It aims to examine the assumption that there is one notion of privacy. It raises the challenge that there may be many pr approaches and perspectives and nuances to privacy. That it is a concept that reflects a country's culture and identity. And with that motivation, the projects that we'll discuss tonight um, were resolved, both the, the legal and scholarly content of the book that we'll discuss, but also the um, theater productions, were resolved to consider privacy in its national and social context and to consider privacy across various disciplines. With respect to the M5 portion of this, the, the theater and five-minute plays, um, Wilfred was convinced that culture, especially theater, is essential for challenging our understanding and communicating privacy's meaning. But the projects we'll discuss also suggest that we were determined to hear from scholars and policymakers as well, especially from the transatlantic tangle of laws implicating privacy. So those will be the two frames of our uh, program tonight. First, um, we'll hear something about the P3M5 project, particularly the theater component. Um, we'll have the chance to premiere one of the uh, plays that has been filmed. Um, a number of other plays have been commissioned in the US and Europe to consider the question, what does privacy mean in the digital age? Um, the screenings of the other uh, theater productions will, will be available on the, on the televisions in the lobby during the reception. So please stick around and take time to, uh, to take a look at those. We'll then turn our attention to a kind of informal panel discussion about um, related to the book that, uh, that Andreas mentioned, which we'll publish in a, a few days. Um, I'm pleased to be able to introduce to you a handful of the experts and scholars who contributed chapters to that book. So first we'll hear from um, Kevin Place, who is the uh, outreach director for the Goethe Institute and the P3M5 project. And after he said a few things and actually shown you one of these, uh, these film clips, then we'll, um, we'll call the Hi, my name is Kevin Place, and I'm the P3M5 Theater Outreach Coordinator here at the Goethe Institute. I'm pleased to be working with the Goethe Institute on this wonderful theater project. Now, I imagine some of you are, are attempting the mental bridge between privacy and theater, and it's one that didn't necessarily click right away for me at first, but as I began to work on the project, it really uh, melded well. Um, Russell was mentioning our, our, our previous director, Wilfried, before. Uh, and Wilfried was struggling with the idea of how to engage with privacy via art and via culture. And we see some of those attempts out in the lobby, uh, these cartoons that have been commissioned uh, by the Institute uh, to engage with privacy-related topics. So uh, please be sure to check those out. So that was a, an early attempt that we've continued to engage uh, with privacy through art. But theater became a medium that, that was the most interesting, I think. Uh, in many ways, theater is useful in discussing privacy because as an art form, it's immediate, it's intimate, and it's personal. Uh, and so there's something very private already ab about the act of, of live theater, that you're in the same space as someone else. But theater also has this lovely attribute that you can record it pretty darn well that you can uh, make a film recording of theater, and you have a lot of the same experience of watching a live performance in watching a filmed piece. A and so Wilfried, working with other people here at the Institute, uh, went about uh, trying to set up a network of, of 15 theaters. Uh, 10 of these come from Europe, uh, and thanks to wonderful partnerships uh, with other European Union uh, uh, cultural institutions, uh, Sweden, I see uh, Linda Zakerson is here, uh, but many others, we uh, set up this network of, of 10 theaters across Europe uh, based on recommendations from our cultural partners here in Washington. We sort of said, you know, what are the theaters in your countries that might be interested in this question of privacy? 
Uh, on the United States side, uh, we set up uh, three curators. Uh, Gillian Drake, a, a local independent producer who works with the, uh, the Goethe Institute often. You might have run into her if you've been at Goethe Institute programming before. As well as Kwame Koyar Ma, the formidable artistic director at Baltimore Center Stage. And Jim Nicola, who's the artistic director at New York Theater Workshop up in New York City. And those three people helped us to put together five uh, large regional theaters across America that would also be interested in engaging with this question of privacy. And so all 15 of, the, of those theaters were tasked with finding a playwright, uh, someone who, who would be interested in engaging with this question, what does privacy mean to you in the digital age? Uh, we asked them to write five-minute plays in response to that question. Uh, and we are going to be premiering live theatrical performances of those plays across the United States uh, from now. We've got one coming up in February all the way through June 2018. Uh, there'll be some in this area, but others spread out across the country, a lot in California, actually. So lots of live theater happening. But uh, we also wanted to find a way for these plays to have a digital life. Uh, and so we created site-specific uh, recordings of the plays. Now, what am I talking about when I'm saying site-specific? Uh, well, we wanted to have a, a film of the plays, but we didn't really want to film a performance happening in a theater, you know, with a curtain and the black stage behind everyone, a little bit visually uninteresting. Uh, so instead, we, we tasked these theaters with going out into the world around them in their city, finding a real location that would work with uh, the, the subject of their play, and then creating this uh, site-specific film of it. And so these film pieces bridge the gap, I think, between theater and film, using theatrical writing and film techniques to, to tell the story, and are really interesting in that way. Uh, so I'm going to show you one of these films in just a moment, uh, but I also want to let you know that these films are meant to be a resource. Uh, if you're uh, planning events related to privacy, or you know, a, an event in general, it doesn't have to be related to privacy, <laughs> but particularly an event related to privacy, uh, one of our, our goals with these films is that they could be used uh, and to show the di diversity of privacy uh, that, that has been captured on film. So please be in touch with us if you're interested uh, in, in using those or having more access to them. They are all going to be available. Most of them already are available uh, on our website, www.goethe.de backslash P3M5. And we'll make sure uh, you have easy access to that. But uh, enough about all that. Uh, I want to give you a little intro to the film we're going to watch right now. Uh, this film comes from Slovenia. Uh, it's entitled, What is Essential is Invisible to the Eye. Uh, and this is a quotation that comes directly out of L The Little Prince. I don't really remember that section of The Little Prince really well, but the playwright said that anyone in Slovenia would, would know that passage right away. They've got a lot of love uh, for, for that book. Uh, and so Simona Hammer, the playwright, took that idea from The Little Prince uh, and, and turned it into this little, uh, little confrontation in the library. Uh, Simona is, is a delightful young playwright from Slovenia. She's had a lot of success at Slovenian theater festivals, uh, and we're really excited to be able to share her work as part of the project. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's watch What is Essential is Invisible to the Eye. Dobar dan. Te vraćam to da bi se vas posodio, prosim. Okay. Ena je še doma, profit pred ljudmi. Ja, vem, jo še beram. Vam jo podaljšam? Ne, treba, hvala, sem že čist prikoncem. Mm -hmm. Kaj pa je? A je zamodnina? Ne, ni zamodnina. Gospod, ste vi Nejc Novak, rojen 6.9.1985 v Kranju? Ja, me mislim. Stalno prebivališče ulica Tolminskih Punterjev, 8000 Ljubljana. Uh -huh. Davčna številka 9385-1083. Ja, bi radi še mojo krvno skupino, če smo še pri tem. Davčna bo zaenkrat, kar dovolj, hvala. <laughs> telefon? Mam. <laughs> Mi lahko prosim, poveste vaše telefonsko številko. A ja, ni 4, 1, 7, 2, 5, 8, 9, 4. Drži, bančni račun. 
se upravičujem, ampak zakaj vas to zanima? Standardno preverjeni podatkov, lahko mi date kartico, da se treje. Imate pa kar nenovadne prakse v tej vaši knjižnici. Niste prebrali pogodbe, ki ste jo podpisali ob učlenitve. Kdo pa to bere? Tam vse lepo piše. Jaz svoje oči raje trosim na kakšnem drugem števu. Trr števa. 682,16 evra, brez rednih mesečnih prihodkov, vrčevanje delnice skladi, negativno. Hvala. Kaj pa imamo vse to v mojih financah? Iz nacionalne baze podatkov. Ne skrbite, ne po obleščene osebe tega ne morejo videti. Še dobro, ker drugače bi vsaka knjižničarka vedela, koliko zaslužim, a ne? Bom preslišala to prikombo. Samo še tole opraviva pa sva. Stan. Kaj? Poročen samski v izvanzakonski skupnosti. Ta drugo, ta tretje. Izvanzakonski skupnosti. Skupno gospodinstvo. Ja. Brez otrok. Ja, vsek sem pa poprečil dva in polkrat na tejančeva, slučajno še to zanima. Hvala, nas ne, ampak čestitam. A sva končala? Sva. Mi lahko končno izposodil te to knjigo? Samo trenutek. Nives živjo. Imam ena, tri, dva. Ja. Ja, sigurno, ja, sem preverila. Lahko pa ga pošleš? Ja, bom. Ja. Oprostite, v čem je problem? Računalnik mi ne pusti, da vam izposodim to knjigo. Kaj? Pravi, da bi bila izposoja te knjige potencijalna grožnja državni varnosti. Kaj vi mi hočete povedati, da se zdi računalniku ta knjiga nevarna? Glede na kronologijo vaših preteklih dejavnosti, nas je program opozoril na potencijalno nevarnost. Kakšne dejavnosti? Kakšne potencijalne nevarnosti? Ne vi zajmavate? Gospod Novak, moja naloga je, da ob tovrstnih zaznanjih grožnjah ravnam v skladu s predpisem. Pa kakšne grožnje? Kaj vam je? Vse ostalo vam bodo povedali na policijski postaji. Čekaj, kaj, je to slučajno kakšna skrita kamera ali kaj podobnega? Ne. Se vi slučajno delate norca iz mene? Ne, nekakor. Policisti vam bodo razlogili. Pa kakšna policija? Pa to je pomota. Ta vaš računalnik je nekaj pobrkljal. Gospod Novak, računalnik se nikoli ne zmoti. Nič nisem naredil na robe. Gospod Novak, program je izključno preventivne narave. Nihče ne pravi, da ste storili kaj na robe. Kaj tu piše? Hočem vedeti, kaj piše v tem vašem jebenem računalniku. Bartol, Alamut, alkoholni kis, kaj? Kubrik. How I stopped warring and loved the bomb. Terorizem, teroristi, gnojilo. Pa kje ste to dobili? To je kriminal, pa tega ne smete. Izolirni trak, žebli, čelada. Pa to je zaplezat. Jaz plezam, razprodaje so ble. Italska karta, Qatar Air, pa na počitnicah sem bil, no. Gospod Novak, to so zaupni podatki. Pa to so moji podatki, to je moj lajf. Ši, pomirite se. Gledajte, jaz sem pošten državljan, jaz plačujem davke in vse in nič takega nisem naredil. Računalnik ne laže, gospod Novak. Jaz nisem terorist. Nihče ne pravi, da ste terorist. Pa tu piše, da sem... Tu piše samo to, kar ste počeli, gospod Novak. Ste ali niste počeli vse počeli. Sem, sem, ampak to še nič ne pomeni. Torej priznate, se pravi, je res. Sem vam rekla, računalnik se nikoli ne zmoti. Res je, da so sledje vaših dogodkov dejan predstavlja grožnjo državni varnosti in stabilnosti v regiji. In zato vas bomo najprej zaslišali. Na to pa v skladu z mednarodnim pravom in internimi akti procesirali, obtožili, onesposobili in ali eliminirali. Na to bomo izsledili metastaze vaših protidržavnih akcij, preverili bomo vaše sorodnike, prijatelje, partnerje, znance, sodelavce, ne bi si mislili, kje je vse usklije neposlušnost. Preventivna eliminacija subjektov, ki je v vaši odsotnosti preveč ne glede v skali in slednjo razno 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 razno